When ordering my product, I was sent a sample from the manufacturer. The quality was good, so I proceeded with my order. When the order arrived, the quality was not the same as the sample. It's not terrible, but not the same as the sample. Is there any way to avoid this kind of thing? Unfortunately, this is a very, very common thing that happens with people. And it really, really sucks, to be honest. The only really good way around this to avoid this would be to have a third party quality control in China. I'm assuming, let's just assume this factory is in China. That's really the one true, true way to avoid it. You'd have to have a third party do quality control before the shipment is sent. But that's an expensive added cost and it doesn't make sense for a lot of margins, especially when you're just getting started. So it's not something I normally recommend to people. So what I'll normally recommend for people, right? And, and we've talked about this and I, I mentioned this on the podcast a bunch, but you want to do everything you can to minimize risk. And this is a risk, right? A risk of ordering product. That is not what you expected. It is not the sample. It happens very commonly to a lot of people. In order to minimize that risk as much as possible, that's why I very, very, very strongly urge people to get the lowest minimum order quantity possible because let's say let's say you're really jazzed you get a sample it looks amazing and you're super stoked about it and you're like man i'm gonna sell these you know like hot cakes give me 2,000 units because you're just feeling really jazzed about it well you order 2,000 units all 2,000 of them are crap you just spent who knows five ten thousand dollars on that order now you're screwed like there goes your money there goes your budget you got to try to sell these crappy products maybe they're not sellable maybe they are sellable so if you can get that minimum order quantity down 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 as low as it can possibly possibly go, even if you have to sacrifice a little bit of profit margin in the get-go, that's what I would do to minimize risk. Because once this happens, then you're like, well, this sucks. And you can, you know, address it with your supplier, but at least you only ordered 200 units and not 2000 units. That's the first thing I would say is focus on getting minimum order quantity down. The other thing that I would really stress is a lot, a lot, a lot of photos from your supplier. Like I want photos of the product being made. I want it in its packaging. I want it in the boxes. And if you don't like the photos and if they're not clear, tell them to send you more photos. Remember, again, this is part of the process of paying 30% upfront, 70% upon completion. You've only paid 30%. So if it's not the way you like it, you don't have to pay the rest. So get as many photos as you want, especially on these first orders. You get a photo and you're like, ah, I can't really tell if that's the same quality. Give me another photo. I want it close up. I want to see the back. Can you open it? Can you pull it out? I want to see it. I want more photos. Send me photos of five units. Like you demand the photos that you want and you tell them like, I'm not making the final payment until I'm satisfied with the way this order looks. So I would really, really go hard on the photos before you pay, make the final payment. Another thing that you can try to do, but there's ways that you could get scammed on this, but I've done, we've done it with other students in the past, especially those who have to do boat shipping is have them ship like 50 units air, 20 units air, and then the rest boat. Or if you want to ship all air, but have them ship 20 of them up front and then wait to ship the rest of them, tell them you want to do that. Do not, however, what I would say is like, don't tell them this until after they've made the product. Because again, if you tell them before they can scam you, they can make 20 of them really nice. The rest of them crappy, send you the 20 nice one. You know what I'm saying? So you tell them to make, okay, make me 500 units. Hello, sir. Your 500 units are finished and ready to ship. Great. Let me see photos. I want to see photos of all my 500 units. Here they are. There's 10 boxes. Okay. I want to see photos inside all the boxes, put them all out on the floor. I want to see that all the boxes are there full of my product. Great. Okay. Then you tell them, can you send me one of those boxes right now? I will pay for one of those boxes. Send me one of them. Once I get that box and I verify the quality, then I'll pay for the rest of the boxes. And if they ship it to you, great. And if they say, no, we're not going to do that. Then you say, okay, like this is obviously red flag, right? This is a red flag for the relationship, a red flag for the supplier. Now, obviously, yeah, maybe you already spent 30% of the order up front, but that shouldn't be a super huge amount of money. And honestly, you're way better off spending $300 and walking away from a horrible relationship and low quality products than you are spending $2,000 and getting 500 units that you can't sell and then still having to go to a different factory. So minimize your risk as much as you can, but understand that sometimes crap like this happens and you just have to try to address it the best you can. This is why it really comes down to doing your due diligence up front in negotiations and talking and vetting out the manufacturer and seeing, do they seem legit? Do they seem trustworthy? And then taking these little steps to make sure you're protecting yourself on that first order.
Now, when your first order comes in, okay, let's say this has happened. It happened. You ordered your product. It came in and it doesn't look like what your sample looked like. Now you have to try to do your best to remedy the situation. I would definitely, I'm assuming you still have your good sample in hand, right? I would definitely take multiple, multiple photos, videos too, comparing the sample to the quality of the product they shipped you and get close, get zoomed and explain to them this is not the quality of the sample that I ordered. What's the deal? Like, why did you not send me the same quality? They'll give you excuses. I've heard many excuses from people. Oh, we had to change our shipping. Oh, we ran out of this fabric. So we had to use this other fabric. And you just have to be very straightforward with them and very clear and be like, this is not acceptable. This is not what I paid for. If changes like this need to happen, I need to know about it before the order and get all of this in, obviously you're going to get it in writing, get all this in writing, document this all, because what you can do again, this is why in the coaching, I highly recommend you go through Alibaba pay and you work with factories with trade assurance, because if it is not the quality of your sample, the quality of the terms you agreed on, file a complaint with Alibaba and get your money back. I've had many friends and students do this successfully, but the way that you're going to win an appeal with Alibaba is making sure you have have very straight and clear documentation and expectations. Don't do anything vaguely with Asian suppliers. Don't assume anything. Do not assume that they're going to make this the order the same as the sample or assume that they're going to do something this way or the right way because you will be disappointed <laughs> probably more times than not. So have very clear documentation via email, via Alibaba messaging, however you're communicating of this is exactly what I'm expecting from my first order. This material, this quality, it should look like this, have photos, use the sample as a reference. And then when it comes and it's not the same, then you can take photos, you can reference your message you sent them, you can message reference the confirmation from them. And then you submit all of that information to Alibaba's trade assurance and say, yo, here's the documentation. I told them this is what I was buying. They did not send me this. I have photo proof. This is not what they sent me. And you can get a refund for your order. It's all about taking as many steps as you can to protect yourself, right? Minimize risk and do the best you can to protect yourself from this happening the first time and then from it happening again. Just make sure you're always thinking, how can I minimize risk? How can I be extra crystal clear, overly cautious uh, with your suppliers, especially in the beginning until you develop that relationship? And again, this is another huge reason why I very strongly recommend people ship product to their house if they can. I understand some of you are not in the United States. It doesn't make sense for you to do that. You got to go straight to a prep center. I get that. But if you can start this business, getting it to your house, because like this product might be decent. Like you said here, like you got it. It's not terrible, but it's not the same as the sample. Maybe that's not good enough for you to sell. Or maybe there's defects in there that's like, mm, like I'm, I don't feel comfortable selling this. This is going to get me a three-star review. If they got this, I'm not selling this one. If that goes straight to a prep center, Joe Schmo at the prep center, who's doing your quality control, he might look at that and be like, yeah, this looks pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Pass it off. Yeah. It looks great. You know what I'm saying? So you, I personally am a believer in this is your baby. You want to build a premium quality experience. You should be doing your quality control first before you trust someone else to do your quality control for you. That's just my personal opinion on the matter though, as far as quality control goes to make sure that things are up to your standards before you start shipping hundreds of units off to Amazon and then getting three and four star reviews that are going to hurt you long-term.